Welcome back folks. So today we're reacting to something a wee bit different. We've got a Loudwire compilation of their 15 greatest guitar solos of all time. Who has put these together? I'm not sure. But I'm kind of curious to see what we've got. Um, how many I'll agree with, how many I'll disagree with. Put your input in down below and let me know what you think as well. So without further ado, let's get to it. Thank you to all you guys that have been donating through the Buy Me A Coffee link and also been buying my music, you know, purchasing from Bandcamp. You know what? That's amazing. Thank you very much. That is what supports this channel because all of these reactions are all copyright. So I don't earn anything from this. You know, and, and yeah, you're getting adverts and all that, but that's all being collected by the managers and all the rest of that. So if you do enjoy what I'm doing um, and you want to help support me, Bandcamp's your best bet. Go to Bandcamp because you can buy it up for the same price of the, of the coffee and you're getting all my music. You know, so thank you very much to everybody that is helping support the channel. Kirk. Strange recording is used for this. Okay, so um, there's another. There's, I'm gonna have to be quick on the draw here because there's Judas Priest up already. I actually don't know that one. Beyond the Realms of Death. Don't think I know that one. Um, one, yeah. Um. I have to admit, Metallica solos are not really my bag, but you can't really argue with one, can you? I actually think the song is better. I would say the introduction, the guitar riff at the beginning, and also the drumming, you know, when it gets into the da -da 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 -da. you know, that first time I heard it was probably more impressive to me than the guitar solo. Um, I would say Metallica probably have better solos than that. Fade to Black. Probably, I actually quite like some of the solos of, um, you know, the self-titled album as well. Um, I know their 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 greatest work is really in the eighties, um, but some of the sort of uh, some of the melodic solos, the more restrained solos on that album, I really enjoyed as well. Anyway, let's keep it moving. Judas Priest. Lots of fail. That's a good one. Like, I mean, that's a good one. <laughs> Not, that's, let's be honest, that's a good solo. Um, I don't know. Between the hammer and the anvil? Painkiller? You know, Painkiller is like such an underrated album. Um, remember the first time I heard that? You know, it sounded like it was from the future. It still sounds way ahead of its time. Um, so I'd be inclined to pick something off that album, probably. Seen Priest live before, and you know, there. Ah, it's just unreal. Brilliant band. Holding Bay. Yeah, I mean, that's a great solo as well. You know, it sort of sticks in the head, the way he's using those arpeggios high and low on the guitar. You know, it's like a question and answer type thing. Uh, again, I'd be more inclined to pick something like Far Beyond the Sun. Um, or the song Perpetual is probably my favorite Ingve Inge song ever, which is off that Fire and Ice album. It's beautiful. There's some superb moments in that song. Um, but yeah, let's go on. Yeah, it's a good call. Let's, let's face it, you could probably fill the, the 15 greatest guitar solos with Iron Maiden solos, couldn't you? But this is a good one. It's one of those solos you, you try and sing along to. Huh. I actually have a friend learning Highway, Highway Star recently. I 
actually had um, quite a lot of uh, Richie Blackmore um, YouTube recommendations come up recently, funnily enough. Um, it's weird because I haven't been searching any Deep Purple or Richie Blackmore. But uh, the stuff that had been coming up in my feed was all, you know, people saying about how difficult he was to get along, like Ronnie James Dio talking about how difficult he was um, as a guy. Obviously not anything to do with sort of his creative genius. My dad was a massive Deep Purple fan, so, you know, we grew up listening to that kind of stuff in the house as kids. Um, but for some reason, um, and listen to Rainbow as well, um, but for some reason, uh, Richie Blackmore's plan never really grabbed me. I don't know why I can appreciate it for what it, what it is, but it never grabbed me the same way as some other guitarists. So um, I guess I'm going to have to dive into some of the old Deep Purple stuff to really take it in. You know, now might be the time to give it a proper listen. Slow hand. Okay, so I'm going to have to... Ooh, Megadeth, Tornado of Souls. Good call. Um, I'm going to have to um, dive deeper into Clapton stuff because, you know, I mean, I've, I've heard quite a few Clapton songs throughout my life and, um, I don't know, for me, he's always seemed a wee bit overrated as a guitarist. Um, there's no denying that he has a lot of feel and expression in his plan and I guess and that's why, you know, that people rate him so highly. But, uh, again, another guitarist that's never really grabbed me that much. Um, prefer the compositions that he's been involved with as opposed to the actual solos. So give me a couple of solos that I might have missed along the way. Um, I've obviously heard that one before. Um, but some hidden gems maybe that might convince me that he is as good as everybody else says he is. Megadeth, I'm a big Megadeth fan, fan. You know, so anything with Marty Friedman playing on it. Um, Tornado of Souls might not be the one I would pick, but it's a good call. Major. Yeah. I've actually watched a few um, videos from that performance. Thank you. Thank you. You got it right. Although you skipped my favorite bit, the start of the solo. Oh, he's changing it live. It's a different... Yeah. Um, not the biggest Guns N' Roses fan. Don't dislike them. Just, uh... Don't like them as much as everybody else seems to. Old oh, Randy. Thank you for being on the list. Thank you. Such a shame. What was he, like 24 whenever he... Ah, uh, it's horrible. That first album that he plays on with Ozzy? I don't know how many times I've listened to that in my life. Um, You know, I've, of course, I've tried. You know, I've tried to learn those solos and the riffs and stuff like that from that first album. I actually had... The, remember the Tribute, the live album? Um, I had the transcript of that in, as a book. Years and years. I mean, they were going back to probably 20... 25 years ago, um, whenever I was trying to learn that anyway. But Over the Mountain is a cracking solo, you know, um, missed that one. But yeah, listen, you can't argue Mr. Crowley, that's a classic. Let's go on. Yes. Brian May is my favorite guitarist probably of all time. This wouldn't be the one I would pick, but it's a perfect solo for the song. One of the things I love about Brian with solos, changing it live for a start. Okay, um, one of the things I love about his solo style is the way he plays around ahead of the beat and um, before the beat. You know, um, so a, a sense of like rubato is perfect. 
it reminds me very much of um, it's probably a strange parallel to, to, to draw but if you go and listen to some of Karen Carpenter's singing you know she has one of the most beautiful voices ever recorded um, if you listen to her sense of timing and she was a fantastic drummer not everybody knows that but you know she was originally the drummer in the band and she drum when she was drumming she also sang um, but listen to her sense of timing when she's ahead and behind the beat and that's something I love about Brian's playing you know he's not to the grid I mean he does play exactly on the beat in terms of as much as humanly possible but he purposefully delays it you know ahead and that gives it that real spontaneous kind of feel it, it adds to so much so much expression um yeah so i'm glad to see queen on the list nobody would be we wouldn't be where we are without jimmy let's face it his own I mean what would it have been like to be around at the time that Jimmy was doing this nothing else like this at the time you know there's a billion guitar players in the world now all in their bedroom and there's a lot of very talented guitarists out there so it's very easy to be sort of complacent about this stuff but just imagine being back in the day and hearing this being like, what is that? I actually do really like the stairway solo. Partly due to what the band are doing in the background. If you listen to the energy, um, especially from the drums and the bass that are driving this part. The solo is iconic, obviously, but if you listen to actually to what's driving it, that's part of why it's such a great solo, I think. Listen to bottom on the drums, what he's doing there, like. This kind of stuff's going on, isn't it? Like, you know, when was the last time you seen a big band sort of you know, given these sort of spontaneous solo performances, you know, where there's a lot of improvisation involved, you know, I quite like the fact that they've taken the live versions now of these because you can hear these guys. They're not just one trick ponies and they're like, they've crafted their solo in the studio and they just stick to it. You know, it shows you how talented they are that, you know, they can, you know, part of it is just improvisation and then I love that um, aspect of it. Dave Gilmore. Always plan for the song. Never trying to show off. All fail. Beautiful phrasing. Can't really go wrong, you know. Um, Dave Gilmore, you know, there's a reason why everybody rates him so highly. Um, I'm curious that there's no Jeff back on here. You know, Jeff back is maybe a wee bit too idiosyncratic for sort of mainstream. Although I haven't got to the. Is it number one next? Probably should have had a guess. What is going to be number one? Not sure. Of course. How did I forget about Eddie? Is there a better image of a rock star? Let's face it. His own belt, you know, Frankenstrat, the cigarette burning at the end. That's a rock star. Probably completely wasted in his head as well. Like, I don't know. Was anything as a god given talent? That he was it. Especially the, the early Eddie Van Halen, or especially the early Van Halen albums, you know, listen to what he's doing, not only in the lead work, but in the rhythm work. You know, he's just all over those albums. Um, such, again, idiosyncratic style. Um, sorely missed. But they wrote some killer songs as well, you know, another superb band. This was great fun. Um, but any other videos like this you want me to react to or have a listen through, any um, lists and things like that, you know, this was fun. I quite enjoyed it. So hopefully you've also enjoyed it. 
Um, and I'll see you all again next time for the next reaction. Analysis. Bullshit talking, whatever you want to call it. Thanks for watching.